This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Okay, welcome back to Think Tech and to Opera in Hawaii on Think Tech. I'm your host, Jay Fidel. Our show today is called The Magic of Producing an Opera. Wow, ever think about that? We're going to talk with, uh, we're going to talk with a, a producer, an actual <laughs> producer, Rob Reynolds. And my co-host, as before, is uh, Lynn Johnson. And we're going we're gonna to find out exactly what it, what it means to produce an opera. Well, produce, direct, m make it happen. This is so important. Nobody knows about this. It's like a big yeah. secret. <laughs> Lynn, welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to be here again. Rob, welcome to you to the show. Thank you. Happy to be here. So uh, let's talk about you first. You joined the company. You're yes. now a, a producer, director, as the case may be. We're yeah. going to find out exactly what you do down there. <laughs> Um, where did you come from? What is your background in opera? Uh, I've been working in opera for 30 years or so. I started well, out... You must have started out when you were six or something. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. Um, I started out just doing drafting for uh, Seattle Opera and worked my way up to higher positions of responsibility and eventually was associate technical director and was responsible for making sure all the physical aspects of the show got on stage correctly. So and what is a drafter? You said you did drafting. Drafting, well, all of the shows need to have uh, directions on how to put them onto the stage so that they fit correctly, so that the sight lines are appropriate. Um, and that requires a drawing, just like uh, an architect might do a drawing to show mm -hmm. that everything fits on the stage. Mm -hmm. So that's where I started, was just doing the drafting of the scenery where it fit on the stage. And I also did drafting for a scene shop to illustrate exactly how the show who should be put together physically. Are you an artist? Not specifically an artist. I do have skills that could be applied to being an artist, but I'm not. But I get so far, <clears throat> we're going to explore this step by step the way it unfolds, is you're into spatial perception. Yes. And you have to be able to see how the characters, how the players are going to uh, relate to the, se the scenes, yes. se the scenery. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you're going to have to know the scenery intimately, am I right? Yes. I have to understand how the scenery is going to fit into the space and then how we're going to um, surround the scenery appropriately so that it looks neat, it looks clean, and the audience can focus on the story that the scenery supports. It's getting more interesting, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's important. And I think we, I, I think this is one of the exciting things about opera, is that it's not only beautiful music uh, with the voices and with the instruments, but it's a, it's a very compelling uh, visual experience. And, yes. and we've had mm. the experience of, of the, the curtain goes up and and the audience beholds the stage and breaks into applause because it just takes their breath away. Yes, it does. Every and, time. and so you're, you're part of that visual experience, which yeah. is a very, to me, a very important part of opera. Well, we, we should take a moment and talk to you about how this has changed, even in your 30 years. <laughs> this prop, you know, I mean, way back when we talked mm -hmm. about this before, you know, they would stand in the middle of the stage and yes. belt them out mm -hmm. and not move a muscle. Right. You wouldn't tolerate that today, right. neither would an audience tolerate yeah. that. So it's changed. How has it, it has. changed for you? Well, audience expectations have been modified by all the media that they see today. Um, so going to the opera, in a sense, is, is a little bit of a step back in terms of the experience that you're, that you're going to see. You're, you're seeing a... Um, a 18th century, 19th century art form that we have brought to today. So some shows are going to bring elements of today's aesthetic to it. They're going to bring projections or they're going to, you know, have microphones or, or something. I don't, you know, I'm not Here's a designer. the M word. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We don't they usually could. bring microphones. <laughs> <laughs> to the opera. No, we don't. Um, but then there are also shows where we feature the history of, of opera in that it's um, a more traditional. It's a painted drop. 
it's not a dimensional piece of scenery that has a door that opens or a window that the door might be just painted on the drop. So we make those choices over the seasons about what kind of aesthetic we want to bring to a particular show. And we can bring the traditional or we can bring the modern. Wow. <clears throat> so um, you, it sounds like you have a lot to say about the scenery. I mean, would you, for example, Peter Dean Beck has been out here 500 times <laughs> doing scenery. And I, would you talk to him as he was designing it? Would you consult with him and kibitz with him? I would expect to, yes. Again, this is my first show here at Hawaii Opera Theater, but I would expect in a new production that he was designing that he would present his ideas to the director and the company and the costume designer, and I would feel comfortable looking at those, bringing my aesthetic to it, and having an opinion. Now, in the design, I'm not the final word. I mean, essentially, the designer gets to make a choice about what he puts on the stage. But, you know, I have a, a lot of experience of seeing different things, and I might bring some detail or some finesse to it that um, could present it, you know, just a little bit better. You, you see it from the point of view of the movement of the players on the stage and the yes. view channels that the audience. Do you make a distinction between the view channel from this side and that side? Do you, you examine how a person sitting on the right, that is audience right, yeah. as opposed to a person sitting in the audience would see things? Do you try I, to satisfy all of them? <laughs> <laughs> My job is to be aware and to make the information um, available to the rest of the players in the group, in the artistic group. The, the, if there's an artistic director, the scenic director, the designer, the costume designer, so that I can say, you know, you know, in this particular moment, uh, and the director, I mean, that's a big part of this, that I can say, um, I'm seeing over here from audience left that there's a moment here that might be hidden by a piece of scenery so that I can point Can't that out. That. We'd That's a choice. <laughs> We'd have to see the knife go into Scorpio. Well, of course, you do have to see that. <laughs> but there are moments that a director could make a choice and say, look, there's something else going on stage that's more important, and we're going to lose just this little bit from that side of the house, or this other little bit from the other side of the house. Just the physics of having three walls on stage, if it's a dimensional set, means that perhaps someone on one side of the audi auditorium is not ever going to see one wall of this three wall space on stage. Yeah. And that's an understanding that we bring to the experience and we have to say, you're aware of that? And then the design team makes a choice and says, yes, we're aware and we're making a choice. So you have to be aware of the sets, the scenery, yes. the view channels. You have to be aware of the story. Yes. You have to be aware of the, the moves that ideally they would make. In fact, you control the moves. I mean, you're going to tell, if I'm wrong, just... just <laughs> I don't control the moves. That's the stage manager. <laughs> the, the, the director. Got, there, there's so many different pieces there on there. There's so many different pieces. And the fact that they can all get along. I mean, do you ever yes. have big fights? Oh, that, <laughs> <laughs> big fights. There are personalities. People are different. And there are um, energetic discussions that happen in the theater. Energetic discussions. Right? Yes. And, uh, <laughs> but in the end, you know, we are focused as a group on putting a, a fabulous experience in front of the audience. And, you know, compromises are made all across the board in all the different areas. But there's a lot of people and there are, you know, extensive conversations that happen between costumes or wigs. Who's in the makeup. conversation? Costumes, wigs. Uh, Mike Kai Nash would be there, I guess. Absolutely. Uh, yes. The music director would be mm -hmm. there. Yeah, yeah, the director, the scenic designer, the costume designer. All of these areas could be significant in a meeting or in a moment. You know, do you see the knife? Do you have to see the blood? If she's got a big hat, she can't hear the orchestra. If, you know, if they have a mask on for some reason, a masked ball, whatever, you know, it, it has to allow them to sing, but it has to look like a mask. They have to be able to hear. It has to fit with their costume. All of those things have come into 
are uh, uh, after rehearsal meetings where we're talking about what went on in that rehearsal. So the players are not at these meetings? Players, how do you mean? You mean the singers? singers. The singers are not. But well, why wouldn't you include them? I mean, this, doesn't this affect them? They have a representative personally? there in my Kai, in, in the director. Often they're um, taking the part of, of a singer's position, you know, saying, you know, she can't hear or she can't see because she has this mask, or and how can we address that? And can do we have people in time to address that? Do we make a different choice? All of these things. Um, there's representation for all the different areas at these meetings but there is a hierarchy and you know so where are you in the, in the hierarchy I was waiting for this I'm question. one of a group because because you know somebody has to has to rule yeah for example Lynn if Lynn was there she'd probably yeah she'd call she would I'd say I, I don't know squat so you guys <laughs> <know>. <laughs> I but haven't so been how do you reach consensus in some way how does that work well most often you do reach a consensus. Everybody listens and, and comes to agree. But in, in the end, there is a hierarchy, and there's someone up at the top who's going to make a choice, even if it has to go to uh, Simon, the executive mm -hmm. director, for some reason, and say, we can't afford to make this change, you <laughs> yeah. know? Yeah. Or, you know, the Simon, director. Simon, <laughs> you're not agreeing with me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's the business. That is what we do. Yeah. It's a collaborative art. Yeah. I couldn't just put a setup up there on be. stage. I mean, yeah. you, two, three and a half hours of sitting and looking at some scenery with no singers wouldn't be much of a show. So yeah. Yeah. we have to have all of the parts. Yeah. So uh, what, about, what about the whole notion of the, of the, the places that the players are when, they, when they're acting? And they're acting more these days than they did in the past. They are. Do you more. set those places? Is that part of your drafting? How do you mean places? I mean where they are on stage. Where they, where they are on stage. Chalk marks, what have yeah. you. Yeah. Um, the director makes those choices. Mm -hmm. And then as they work through in rehearsal, on the rehearsal hall, it develops a bit, it changes a bit, and then as they get into the, then they get into the theater and they um, discover Oh, they're too close to a wall, so they, they move. Or there's a table in the way, so let's either move the singer or the table. And all of that little detail stuff gets worked on in real time, on, in a rehearsal, on stage, and those adjustments are made. I don't have much control. I sort of supervise people who support it. So if the singer needs a spike on the stage, you know, the a stage manager, a spike is a mark on the floor where you need to stand or where oh. a, a chair needs to be. You heard it here on ThinkTech. <laughs> and this is probably going to be in the final exam, yeah. but it's a short answer final exam. Yeah, please continue. There's a probably spike. marks on the so, floor. So mark here on the floor, because I was thinking, you know, Scarpia, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, back so, to Scarpio. Yeah. Okay, so, so it's a mark on the floor yeah. so, so that when that singer knows where to go. Yes, they yeah. know that they have mm -hmm. the red mark when they're singing this aria or mm -hmm. something like that. Um, or if a chorus member is moving a table, they know they're going from the yellow mark to the green mark mm -hmm. or something like that. And those mm -hmm. are all called spikes? They are called spikes. Oh, and but they're color-coded. They're spike, color -coded. They are by where they are or what act they're mm -hmm. in. But, the, who needs but it? the players cannot look down at the spike. They just have to sort of look through That's the corner as of they their move eyes. up to it. Yeah. Because it disappears once you stand on it, yeah, obviously. You, it. you don't yeah. get to see it. But generally, you know, close is pretty good. Yeah. Um, but there's someone who I supervise, the props master, who's in charge of putting spikes on the floor. Yeah. Oh. So when the stage manager or the director calls, I need a spike for this singer for this moment. They come out, they have their roll of tape, they say what kind of, you know, is it an X, is it red, is it a T, so they have to have the two feet, and then, so they're, you know, there's an expertise so does each, to put does in the each spike. singer have their own color, or? Uh, it's a choice that's made in the course of, of the show. Mm -hmm. So it might be that they have their own color, or it might be that a particular act has a particular color. Um, generally, a singer spike would be that particular singer's color for that moment, and they would know what color to go to. Mm -hmm. So then we're almost finished with the first half of our little <laughs> show today. Could you, as my co-host and a member of the Opera Board and a, mus a, mus a musicologist, musicologist, right? Can you can summarize what they should know out there about the discussion so far? 
Well, I think that, okay, my feeling is you don't want them to know anything because you want it for them to look like it's totally natural, right? They doesn't want to look contrived at all. So if it's well done, it looks like these are real people having this passionate relationship and she's falling in love with the with the bullfighter yeah. and but she's, you know, supposed to be with Don Jose and it's, you know, so yeah, so they don't care. That's but but it's going to work. They care that it works. You know, I mean, <laughs> how could you cry the way I always do if you're thinking about the spikes on the floor? That's right. Exactly. <laughs> we'll take a short break. And when we come back, Rob, we're going to ask you about the special implications, the special parameters, the special details, the special attention to details in Carmen, as distinguished from all other operas in the world. Coming soon. We'll be right back. She said, all the better to see you with, my dear. That's so old. What are you doing? Okay, cool. Research says reading from birth accelerates the baby's brain development. And you're doing that now? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is the starting line. Push. Uh, when this is over, you're dead. Read aloud 15 minutes. Every child, every parent, every day. Living in this crazy world. So caught up in the confusion, nothing is making sense for me and you. We're going to give a little love, have a little hope, make this world a little better. Try a little more, hard and every more, let's do what we can. Aloha, welcome to Hawaii. This is Prince Dykes, your host of the Prince of Investing, coming to you guys each and every Tuesday at 11 a.m right here on Think Tech Hawaii. Don't forget to come by and check out some of the great information on stocks, investing, your money, all the other great stuff, and I'll be your host. See you Tuesday. Okay, we're back with Opera in Hawaii with Lynn Johnson, a member of the Opera Board and my co-host for this show, <coughs> and uh, Rob Reynolds, who is the Director of Production for Hawaii Opera Theater. And the one coming up, the opera coming up, starting rehearsals next week, is Carmen. One, that's the C in ABC, right? A for Aida, B for Boheme, C for Carmen. It means it's one of the top operas yeah. in popularity around the world forever. Okay, so I wanted to ask, you know, what's, what's Carmen like from your point of view? And what are you trying to convey in terms of the visual impression that you're giving to people? Hmm. Well, from my perspective, because part of what you're asking about is is a designer's eye, and I'm not the designer. My eye is on, is it all fitting together seamlessly? Is it looking neat and clean? Is it, uh, you know, you don't want to see backstage, you know, really my It's really professional eye, in a way. This is, know. in other words, this is being done at the <laughs> highest level, and mm -hmm. we know that this is a team that knows what they're doing, and you're seeing it at, at the highest possible level. So we're, yeah. we're bringing this Carmen scenery <coughs> back. It's been done here before. And um, my job was to make sure it's tuned up and looking good. The and scenery. The scenery. The, the walls and the floors. It had to be what, repainted or re reconfigured in some way? It was. This is scenery that was used before here. It was used, yes. And we, we borrowed it from somewhere else? We, I, we purchased it from someone okay. back in the day. I don't know exactly when. And then we did Carmen on it. And we've also done, I believe, Midsummer Night's Dream on it, so, or parts of it. So parts of it were repainted to be Midsummer Night's Dream. So mm -hmm. The magic of the, of the, <laughs> of the stage. <laughs> That's right. So we repainted it back into be Carmen. And you know, my eye, my job is to make sure it, it looks like Carmen again. And um, prov provide the setting that people can work in. What, what does Carmen look like, though? Is Carmen is what? Uh, let me, is, is 18th century, 18th yeah. century, or early 19th century, wait. Uh, yeah. 18. 18, late 1800s, I guess. I think it's 19, late 1800s. Yeah, so that's okay. 19th century. Okay. Yeah, 19th century. 19th yeah. century. 19th century. Yeah. 19th century. So early it's, 19th. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's based on a, on a novel mm -hmm. and uh, about this woman named Carmen. And, and uh, she's, she's a tough cookie. She's a very tough cookie. And uh, so it takes place in in Spain, right. and she's a gypsy, and, it and takes she place likes, yeah, so. 
in several different locations. Mm -hmm. And part of the challenge is to provide those locations or suggestions of those locations in a way that allows you, the audience to understand you're moving to a different place, but without changing all of the scenery. So mm -hmm. there were choices made by the designer um, in what exactly is, is lit and what is being featured in order to try and present the idea that you're in a, a particular place. You're also coordinating the lighting then. Yes, I, uh, there's a lighting designer and he brings the design and then I support w with managing the crew heads and the crews and running equipment and all of that to provide him with the tools to, to get the appropriate look on the stage. How, how much of this can you write down? You were talking before about the drafting, yeah. the, the drawing essentially mm -hmm. of who's where and mm -hmm. what's, what the view channels are. Yeah. Um, that, that's a lot of information. It is. And then you're talking about all these other people that you're working with. Yes. Who's writing that down? Well, each department is writing their own part of it down. And then I would generally see that, vet it in some way, and look at it and say, well, that makes sense. Or I have this question about how do you hang that light, you know, where there's no pipe to hang it on or whatever. And then the answer is often, well, you're going to get a pipe there for me, aren't you? <laughs> and then I have an opportunity, a challenge to, to get, you know, support that, that choice that's being mm -hmm. made. But in the end, you know, we're all looking at our individual specialties, and I have the overview of the different departments to support those specialties, and then bring it all together and, and make it look refined and have an, an eye to, to make it be one whole. But visual. it changes, doesn't it? It does change. It changes from night to night. It changes because the, you know, air movements in the building. It changes, you know, because of, uh, in the course of the live performance, you know, the table gets moved somewhere else, and I get to learn about that at the first performance and, <laughs> and give a note or make a comment or say, do we need a bigger spike in order to hit the proper place <laughs> or, you know, is that corner of that scenery? you know, catching on a costume, and do we change the costume, or do we change the scenery? All of that Where do you sit? supporting stuff. Hmm? Where do you sit? Uh, well, I haven't discovered that yet. This is my <laughs> first show, but usually... Uh, you can sit next to me if uh, you want. Uh, <laughs> you can sit next to Lynn. We sit near each other. <laughs> I, I would probably sit out in the middle in the main part of the theater and do a lot of walking around to the, mm -hmm. to, as mm -hmm. we said before, mm -hmm. to stage le house left, house right to see what the audience would see to be able to comment about you know there's a moment that might be hidden or not um, and to look at you know, oh I might see backstage here can we put a mm. piece of masking in can mm. we make it neat mm. and clean mm. for mm. all the audience mm. over way over on the sides mm. yeah I think there, there's always these stories about the things that don't I mean my favorite one was where we did I think it might have been Faust or something like that where there's a graveyard but then there was a banquet scene before and the mm. turkey got left on and there was a turkey on oh one no. of the tombstones so yeah. <laughs> the so you got graveyard. to take out the, t the yeah. turkey so <laughs> it was a cooked turkey and then you know didn't belong there so so uh, you know you have to make sure things <laughs> it's like have theater. a proper proper <laughs> say you know, do the things change let's say from the first performance to the last in absolutely. terms of absolutely mm -hmm. absolutely the, they're in a, the singers are still working a little bit on refining mm -hmm. their craft and their interaction with the other singers and the players and with the scenery. So it does change from night to night. They're not, it's not always the same performance. But when it changes in a way that was not agreed or which you don't like, yeah. what do you do to express yourself? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I get to take a note and then I can um, make lots of little doodles around it and, and <laughs> to <laughs> emphasize you to really emphasize mean it that note. and then eventually <laughs> i would think about it choose an appropriate you know way to get the note to the right person because you know i'm not going to go talk directly to the singer you don't talk directly to the singer not generally i would i have there's you know uh, a chain of command in this since i would go to the director and say you know if the director if the singer would hold the knife in a slightly different way, you know, it, it will interact with the person they're trying to kill better, or, you know, can we bring someone to some attention to this moment? 
and then the director makes a choice. Oh, that's really polishing it right it. now. Yeah. You know, the thing about Carmen, and I know this from Lynn, <clears throat> is that, you know, she's a very attractive character. And in the beginning of the opera, you know, you're so impressed with her feist and her sass and, you know, her chutzpah. Okay, but as it goes forward, you're not so impressed anymore. <laughs> she, she sort of declines, in my view anyway, she declines as a likable character. You, you know, it's harder to like her toward the end of the opera when, when she dumps on her, her suitor. Yeah, you kind of like, you feel sorry for Don Jose. I you mean, do, he, you he's do. given up his girlfriend, he's given up his job, he's just, you know, just jumped in wholeheartedly to be with her, and she kind of fickle, she, right? She, she, she pickle, turns off him off, yeah. she's mean, hard, doesn't want any of it. And so, you know, at the beginning, I mean, I think it's okay to, for me anyway, it's okay to feel. You know, she's a romantic object, you know, she's beautiful and, and she's, you know, she's got a certain special quality to her. At the end, maybe not so. So are you going to track on that, on that kind of character dynamic in the way you set the characters up, the way you set the view channels up, the colors, the lights? You know, for example, we have a red background no. here today <laughs> uh, on our green screen. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and you know, and th that is Carmen. R Carmen yeah. is red, yeah. but maybe maybe later Carmen is not so red. Mm. Maybe Carmen is darker somehow. Well, you know, it's not exactly something I'm going to be involved directly with. Uh, again, uh, I'm going to support the people who have those important opinions. The lighting designer who's going to make a choice about lighting at the beginning of the opera versus the end of the opera. A costume designer who's going to make a choice about you know, what she's wearing at the beginning versus the end, the, the director who's going to say, oh, this kind of prop is going to say one thing at the beginning and a different prop is going to say something different at the end. So my job is to support all those people so they yeah. have the tools and they have the objects to I make those the word choices. support is very important in this context yeah. because you, what, what it sounds like to me, I'd be interested in your thoughts about this, Lynn, what it sounds like to me is one of your principal roles is to respect and appreciate the creative efforts that are going on around yes. you, under you, mm -hmm. so that everybody gets his day to mm -hmm. be creative in this in this undertaking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. That's Absolutely. very well put. Well yeah. put. Yeah. Well, that is. I think that's very important. You you have to be kind. You have to be respectful. Yes. But you have to be focused all the time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. The show's up there on stage and and. My part is not featured that you could pick it out. There's something you mentioned earlier. You can't pick out the part of what I do. No, you know, no one came to see making sure that the containers are showing up at the back of the theater with all the scenery. <laughs> no one came to see that. <laughs> I supervised that. It showed up. They get to see this wonderful performance on stage where it's all together and, and of, of a piece. All right. We're almost out of time again, Lynn. Can you summarize? the whole thing. What have we learned today with uh, Rob Reynolds? Well, I think we've learned that he's A, very important, right? The show cannot go on without him. And the second thing we've learned is you don't know he's there. You don't know he's there, but he brings all these creative pieces together and makes it work into a seamless whole. And I'm really looking forward to Carmen. So I'm glad that we have hired you and that you are here permanent to be part of the Hawaii Opera Theater. Yes. I'm happy to be here. And for me, I can't wait for Carmen. I'll be there. Lynn and I will sit close to each other. We'll be watching with due regard for this conversation, okay? All right. And we may be watching the players. We may be listening to the music. We'll be watching all the details, but we'll be thinking of you, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. That's Rob Reynolds, a director of production, Hawaii Opera Theater and my co-host, Lynn Johnson, a member of the Opera Board. Thank you so much, both. Thank you.